To finish our asteroids game, we need to add three items. One item is that when you shoot the asteroids, there's no score. So I shoot the asteroids there, and we don't get any score, right? So that's one item that we need to add. Also, we made it so that the asteroids break into smaller and smaller pieces, which is great, but it's actually messed up our collision detection. See how when this asteroid gets close to me, it kills me because the collision detection is only accounting for large-scale asteroids and not small ones. So we need to fix the collision detection so that when we get close to asteroids, we don't necessarily ex explode. Also, if we shoot all of the asteroids, for instance, if I shoot all of these asteroids, we're supposed to go to the next level of the game. And right now, there is no next level. So once I destroy all of these asteroids, you'll just see that I'm left here and there's no second level or second wave of asteroids that come out. So we need to fix that so that we can have like basically the second wave. And I'll show you what I mean right here. So if I go like this and shoot this asteroid, there's no new asteroids. So we need to account for respawning the asteroids and incrementing them in greater numbers. So let's do that right now. I'm going to open up the game code and the first thing I'm going to do is fix the collision detection. So I'm going to go down here to where we have our collision detection and let's see here. It should be in the asteroid move function. Okay, this function moves our asteroids and then this handles the collision detection. It says that if the ship gets within 34 pixels of the asteroid, then destroy the ship. Well, that's great if it's a large asteroid, because the large asteroid is about 65 or 60 pixels wide, and 34 is about half the distance, half the diameter of the asteroid, and half the diameter of the ship, and that's great. But what if it's a medium-sized or smaller-sized asteroid? We need to adjust for that. So to do that, what we're going to do is make a test to test to see if the asteroid is a large, medium, or small size. So we'll say if, we'll open that if statement up, then an else if, and we'll open that up, and then a lastly, we'll have another else if, and we'll just plug in what we need to test those three conditions. So if this dot underscore x scale equal equals 100% then the asteroid is a large asteroid. Copy, paste. Else if it's 50% it's a medium sized one and if it's 25% on the x scale then it must be the small sized one. And so now all we have to do is just move this code right here I'm going to copy it. Notice I'm copying all the way from this if all the way down to the ending curly brace here. All right, so that's copy. And I'm going to just paste it right in here. So there it is. I'm going to tab this over just so it reads nicer. All right. And so there we have it. So that's the first one. And then what I'll do is I'm going to tab this over also. I'll just paste it in here. Same thing, except this time, after I tab it over, what I'm going to do is I'm going to change this 34 to 17. And that should help the collision detection work a lot better. And one more time, right in between here. Notice in between this curly brace and this curly brace, I paste it in there. Okay, so now, all right, perfect. And then this one, I'll just change it from 17, or from 34, all the way down to 9. So now, the collision detection that compares the x and y axis of the asteroid, this dot x, to the ship, is dependent on what is the x scale of the asteroid. So there it is. Now, there is one thing we need to do though. We've, we've basically made a nice uh, if and else if and else if conditional test to run the collision detection based on the x scale of the asteroid, but I have copied the code and left this code here. So what you need to do is, once you've copied that code and placed it inside those if, else, if conditional statements, you've got to delete that. 
otherwise that will mess up everything running at the bottom of the code. So now if you play the game, you'll notice that when I get close to the rocks, they don't just destroy me. See, before that would have destroyed the ship just being that close. Now I can just squeeze by and it doesn't destroy me. Your collision detection has to be good, otherwise the game is not going to be fun to play. The next thing that I'm going to code is the additional waves of asteroids that need to happen once you clear all the asteroids from the initial wave. So what I'll do is, for this, I'm going to go to the shot move function. The shot move function, I'll tell you why. So this shot move function is what moves the bullets or the shots and in it there is collision detection to see if it hits the asteroids and it runs through a for loop, loops through all the asteroids in the asteroid array, tests each movie clip that's an asteroid on the stage to see if it's hit the bullet. And if it hits the bullets it removes the asteroids and right here this is where it removes the movie clip from the asteroid array and then it splices the asteroid out of the array. Now what we can do is Right here we can run a test, and this is what we're going to do. We'll put an if statement in here, and we'll say if asteroid underscore array dot length. So if the length of the array is less than 1, if the asteroid array, the length of it, is less than 1, then there's no more asteroids. And that means we've destroyed all the asteroids. So this is a perfect place to then create the new wave of asteroids. So we just run an if conditional statement. If the asteroid array's length is less than one, we've killed all the asteroids, and what we'll do is we'll increase the max asked variable by one. So we'll do a max asked plus plus, and then what we'll do is we'll call a function that we're going to need to basically create. Now, this function that we're going to create right now will be a set interval function. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say asked init ID, asteroid init ID, capital I, capital ID, equals set interval. We'll call the set interval function. And in the set interval function, we're going to need to call another function. So we're going to call a function called asteroid init. All right, so set interval will call the asteroid init function. And let's take a look up here. You'll see up here near the top that there is a function, asteroid init, which sets the asteroid index to zero. And then it says while the asteroid index is less than max asteroids, it creates the asteroids. So if we've increased the max asteroid variable, it will then create the asteroids up to whatever this variable is. So if the max asteroids variable is three, it created three asteroids. Now it will create four asteroids. So all we have to do is just call that function. So that's pretty handy. This is the shot move function and the set interval. And we'll say we'll call this asteroid init function and we'll call it after 2000 ticks. 2000 ticks will be uh, two seconds. So once the asteroid array length is less than one, we increase the asteroids variable, and then we do a set interval, and this set interval calls our asteroid init function after 2,000 ticks, which is two seconds. But once we've created this set interval piece, right, it's going to fire every two seconds unless we clear it. So then we have to clear that interval. So to do that, we'll have to go all the way up to our asteroid init function, and after this while loop, we'll just say clear interval and then inside the clear interval we'll say asteroid init ID and that has to be actually in these parentheses so I'll change that there we go so that will clear the interval once all the asteroids have been created and that's important so we don't want them being created every two seconds alright let's test it out so here's the game and we'll try to I'll try to quickly clear all the asteroids here. And once I've cleared all the asteroids, we should see the the new asteroids come out. And there they are. And this time there's four. So that worked out. 